It's entitled, Can We Heal? Dr. Greg Hart. Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome to First Center for Spiritual Living in Manhattan. Uh, Jimmy has just let everybody know that we're broadcasting tonight uh, live on Facebook, uh, Zoom, Instagram, and YouTube, and probably other places that I'm not yet aware of. So it's nice to see everybody here. See Jim and Celia, I think it's Reverend Judith. Um, and I know some of these other callers too, and I think Sh Shane's picture is up in the corner. So welcome everybody. And I wanna welcome all of you that we cannot see, but we hear from. And if there's any people who have questions as we go along on Facebook, uh, you can message Jimmy or Anthony and we will attempt to answer your questions. <clears throat> Tonight's lesson is a little bit of an impromptu lesson. I've been working on a, uh, uh, the lesson I can heal. And much of what I was doing is on another computer in another location. Uh, so for the past hour or two, I was going over some new thought ideas, some ideas that are uh, really, they come from Louise Hay and or Ernest Holmes. So in alignment with uh, the idea of I can heal or can we heal, the answer is always gonna be yes. Uh, and I'll say, if you really want to. And healing doesn't happen to anybody accidentally, I don't believe. I think everything operates in consciousness, but I know that the audience doesn't fully understand that. So let's um, work with a few thoughts. Uh, let's uh, attempt to educate and lift people up a little bit. Uh, the religious science teachings themselves, um, years ago I was told, or, uh, they said, we are a teaching healing group, teaching and healing. And so what do we teach? Well, we teach that there's one life and you're part of that one life. And we teach that life responds to you and you can heal. Uh, so how do we do it? Well, we do so with consciousness. Uh, Louise Hay wrote the international bestseller, You Can Heal Your Life. Everybody on the call, I presume, has seen it. This is the way it used to look. It's been published with many different covers. Uh, last I knew there was 65 million, probably 66 or more now copies in circulation in 28 or 30 languages throughout the world. So the book became an international uh, bestseller. It hit, um, it hit a nerve, it hit a time where people were learning that you really can impact your life, you can heal. Uh, and Louise Hay presented the science of mind teachings in a way I think that we're accessible to just about anyone and everyone who, again, wants to heal. Um, everybody will say that they want to heal, they want prosperity, they want a better life. I mean, we all would say that. Uh, but the thing you really have to ask yourself, are you willing to do what it takes to have that occur? So we start out with the hay material when she would say, we're each 100% responsible for everything that happens in our life. And I'm gonna tell you honestly, that's a tough thing for many people to accept. Uh, I didn't like hearing it when I first heard it. I'm 100% I'm 100, 100 responsible for my life's experience. Um, <laughs> You know, usually when people go to church, they go to church and be made to, you know, they want someone to uplift them, make them feel better, um, where we can offer comfort and uh, promises of a happier future and all of that. And so with this class and, and this information, we run right into the idea that we are each 100% responsible for our lives. Um, that is a tough sell from the pulpit, I'll tell you. <laughs> and... Maybe that's one reason people don't come flocking to um, in large numbers to New Thought Centers because the good ones will teach you just that. They will teach you your life is an outpicturing of consciousness. So as you learn to change your thinking, you will definitely change your life. So we work with consciousness and we can heal. Uh, 
Tonight, I thought I would use, I have a slew, like many, many, many affirmations. And you all know, I believe that there's a difference between an affirmation and a spiritual mind treatment. Uh, and I, I'll say this much, an affirmation is a wonderful thought. It's something that we can really embrace. Uh, when I was 25 or 30 years younger, I probably would be putting these affirmations on a yellow sticky pad and put them on the refrigerator or the mirror. And they would be affirmations that I would recite to remind, remind me of the truth. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean I believe the truth that I put in those yellow sticky notes, but it was definitely a step in the right direction. I could affirm that I'm healthy. I could affirm that I'm uh, wealthy. I could affirm that I'm a good person. I could affirm that um, <laughs> I'm an inlet and outlet of God consciousness. I could affirm all kinds of things where I didn't necessarily believe those things fully at that time. But it is a starting point. And it's a good starting point um, because the underlying conversation for most people is going to be some version of uh, something's missing. Something's missing in me. I'm not good enough in some way. Uh, I'll be okay when I'll be okay in the future when someone does something for me or when my ship comes in or when uh, something happens. Everything that about me that I want is contingent upon other things happening in the future. If I'm thinking the way many th people think who come into our teaching. Few people, very few people understand when they come into this teaching, uh, the fullness of the law of attraction, the fullness of the law of cause and effect, the fullness of the law of um, correspondence. These are ideas and thoughts that you get to embrace the more you stay around after a while. So we start with this idea again that I am 100% responsible for my life. The next idea I would really want to pass on to everybody is, and you're not to blame for anything. Um, we have a tenet in religious science, an axiom that we talk about from time to time, which is this. You are in the perfect place at the perfect time and all of the time. It could be no other way. So everything in life is perfect and unfolding magnificently and always. And that's what we understand. Now, we understand it intellectually. We understand it philosophically. And some of us have that kind of faith. And we practice that faith most of the time. You know, but we live in a world <laughs> where you, know, you can wake up in the morning, you can meditate, you can pray, you can know, and you can be certain where you are in the scheme of things and who you are in this thing called life. And you can know that all of life is here responding to you perfectly. And unless it's a deep practice, you'll go out the door and very soon, someone will say something or do something. And then you're gonna start making your life about what someone else is doing or what they're, you perceive they're doing to you. And you really, <laughs> what we have to wake to always is there is no other. So what does that mean? Well, when the idea is there is no other would suggest in truth, there is nothing outside of you. And that speaks of a metaphysical concept where we understand that we live, we move, we have our existence in divine substance. And every encounter is in fact a holy encounter. Every person you meet um, is a part of you. And everybody in life is evolving perfectly. We're all in the perfect place, perfect time. Now, that's a very deep metaphysical concept that never, I don't expect everyone will embrace right away. So where do you begin? Where do you begin to heal? <laughs> and knowing, accepting, I hope you believe, you know, because you're here, you're plugged into one of our services or our outlets or medias. We start with the premise that healing is possible. And I would like you to embrace the idea, I can heal. And it starts, I'll use Louise Hay, wherever you are, you know, whatever she's talked about cleaning your house, whatever thought you're thinking, you start with that one. And you, if it's negative, you change it, you neutralize it, you change the lesser idea for the greater. 
that's the work that we do. The work is to change the lesser idea for the greater. Um, you can imagine if you keep doing this as a practice, you keep canceling out the negatives and replacing the negative ideas, the negative beliefs with the positive. Eventually what's gonna happen because you know the law of mind, you're gonna to begin to outpicture a reflection of the positivity that is living within your being. Your consciousness is actually shifting. That's what happens when a person learns how to do affirmative prayer truly and deeply. He or she will take the time, they'll, it's the time, it's the art, it's the method of changing your thinking, um, not just for an afternoon, ju not just for an hour, not just for tonight, but it becomes a high calling and a way of life. So how do we get there? And what can we do with some affirmations? I have a list here which I would like to share with you, at least some of them. And you could do a little bit of a self-assessment with it. Um, so let, and again, not with the idea of criticizing yourself ever, 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 because <laughs> one of our sayings is we never, never, never uh, will criticize ourselves for being where we are. It's just the point of, to notice, you know, are you doing this? And if so, let's turn it around. So, one of the ones I've been saying for at least 35 years is I love, accept, and approve of myself exactly the way I am. And you can say it to yourself and see if it rings true. I love, accept, and approve of myself exactly the way I am. And I'm going to read on a couple more, and then I'm going to turn to you for uh, your, uh, your thoughts. Um, All is well in my world, okay? That's one I've used. And along right with it, everything is perfect. Just make a note how you feel about all is well in my world and everything is perfect. And then you're in a situation and it could be a situation that's bumpy and things seem pretty tough. And you might say to yourself, out of this situation, only good will come. See, that's a real religious scientist because the person is going to, they're going to know the truth. Out of this situation, only good can come. Uh, one of my all-time favorites about any situation, any thought that I'm experiencing uh, where I'm tripping, my generation will say I'm tripping, which means I'm in some type of a story that's not taking me any place that I really want to go. I will say to myself, it's only a thought I'm having and a thought can be changed. Whatever you're experiencing in your, your life, wherever you're reacting to anything, uh, you're reacting to, it's a thought, a belief, and you have the ability to um, draw a bigger circle around it. If I want to quote Markham's famous poem, draw a bigger circle around it and know you can see it a different way. The next, the point of power is always in the present moment, okay? Ernest Holmes said years ago, principle, divine principle is not bound by precedent, meaning it's not bound by anything. <laughs> so if you have the ability to be in a new moment with a new thought, my God, you can open up a world of good. You know, everything's possible and probable when you're, you're in a new moment where you can drop the story. Um, one of the toughest things for people is they, they drag all the dead bodies into the present. Ernest Holmes talked about the ancient corpses that people drag around with them. And that would be the sense of, oh, I'm not good enough. Nobody likes me. Nobody cares. I've been rejected and I'm worthless and I've been deceived and I've been betrayed. And whatever it is, it's a whole bunch of stuff and it's heavy. And if you carry that with you, I mean, what do you think is going to happen? Um, when Ernest Holmes said, there is power infinite power, <laughs> you know, there's not a spot where this power is not. It, there's, it's a presence, it's never an absence. So there is this power that responds to us endlessly and always. And why the hell would I want to carry all this garbage with me? Because that garbage is going to prevent me from being in this new glorious perfect moment, which is full, pregnant of possibilities. It's like endlessly 
full of potential. And the only thing that's gonna stop you from demonstrating the greater and bigger ideas that you're capable of having in the life you've come here to live is the garbage that we habitually carry around. Some people don't wanna let go of that stuff either. I can promise you, I've been running facilitating groups for a long time, decades. And they'll say, well, Greg, you know, you don't expect me to forgive this person. And I will say, I don't have an expectation one way or another, but the thing is, can't you see where your unwillingness to forgive is really holding you back? There's a book I love, it's called Love Holds No Grievances, The Relinquishment of Attack. It's just as long as you will harbor, you know, the ancient hurts, the grievances, the scorecards of old, the only person that really hurts ever is you. So we want to practice the teaching. We want to know the point of power is always in this moment, and you have the ability in any new moment to think a new thought and be transformed you know, by the very process of thinking uh, of it in a different way and practicing and realizing the presence is here and it's responding to you. Next affirmation, I am always in the process of positive change. That's as true as true can be <laughs> because life is unfolding for everyone everywhere. And it would be great if each of us could awaken to that, that I'm always in the process of positive change. It couldn't be any other way. No matter what the hell's happening, you're always in the process of positive change because all of life is there to bring you to a higher place. And you might say, but Greg, I'm going through a hellish experience right now. My girlfriend, my boyfriend left me and someone's betrayed me. This has happened, that's happened. You know, and then I sit back and I think, well, how am I gonna answer this one? Um, I'll go with Ralph Waldo Emerson when he so beautifully said, you know, we, the people, you know, the finite alone suffer. Well, the infinite lays back in, you know, smiling repose. So we suffer ourselves when we're attached to things being a certain way and people showing up in a certain way. And, you know, really, if you can come back to the basic tenets here that we're always in the perfect place at the perfect time, uh, there's a detachment that comes in where we're letting go a little bit more because we're trusting the processes of life, as L Louise Hay would have said. I trust the process of life and I'm willing to let go. I trust the process of positive change because that's all that can ever be, okay? Principle, divine principle is not bound by anything. And I have the ability to think new thoughts, great thoughts that will take me uh, all the way. Uh, the next affirmation is it's safe. It's very safe to look within. The universe has been wooing you all your life, attempting to get your attention. So it's the safest place to be, is to get acquainted with that inner self that really desires you to express yourself in greater light and freedom and connection. So it's safe to look within. You might say that to yourself if you have a problem going there. A uh, couple more. I forgive myself and I set myself free. Wherever you find yourself being critical of anything you've done, it doesn't matter if you've done it when you're 18 or 28 or wherever you are in life, I'd like you to consider releasing it tonight and say to yourself, I forgive myself and I set myself free. Try to do it passionately so it moves beyond being an affirmation and it goes more towards being an actual, an actual treatment that you embody so you can release. I forgive myself and I set myself free. And one more, as I say yes to life, life says yes to me. And I need to ask the technicians a question now. If I interact with the audience now, can we continue the recording or do I just have to keep going with my list? Okay, so I guess I'm gonna continue with um, uh, my list, because I'd be in, if I open up the microphone right now, we lose half the audience. So we'll continue on and we will talk in a few minutes, all right? This was going to be a little break and then go back to the list, but I guess I'll go to the list a little bit longer. This one's important. 
I don't know if you'll see it the same way I do. The statement is, I now go beyond other people's fears and limitations. Okay, so what comes up for me is this. We had parents, grandparents, uncles, aunts, older brothers and sisters who cared about us and perhaps they had a lot of fears and they wanted us to be safe. safe. So, you know, they would project all these caring, fearful thoughts perhaps upon us. And that might have been the reality, your reality with them 20, 25 years ago. But you're in a new moment. This is now we're in the 2020s. You know, you've grown a lot. And now you dare to go beyond other people's fears and their limiting ideas. And even though we honor them greatly because they took care of us and they um, did their best to guide us, uh, you can say, I now go beyond other people's fears and limitations. It might even be a relationship that you currently have. Uh, I release the need to get caught up in that. And I, I, I now go beyond other people's fears and limitations. The next, you can see if this resonates for you, whether you feel I am divinely guided and protected all the time. And you can answer for yourself. I am divinely guided and protected all the time. It's either yes or no, or maybe you'll say sometimes I feel that way. Uh, the next one I think I've said three times tonight, but it's on the list. It's probably that important. I fully trust the process of life. If you can say that, boy, you've come a long way. I fully trust the process of life. Followed by, I am deeply fulfilled by everything I do. Um, if you're practicing this teaching uh, to the extent you could be, you would know that every encounter is a holy encounter and you would become deeply fulfilled in everything you do because you'd understand that all of it's sacred, all of it's divine. <laughs> You would have a greater appreciation for the people you travel the road of life with because you're going to know that, like yourself, you're awakening to your own uh, divinity and you will realize that the people around you, uh, you you'd have a greater realization of who, who they are. Uh, next, as I forgive myself, it becomes easier to forgive others. Okay. And I release the past. I'm willing to forgive everyone. One more here. I am willing to let go. So I ask the audience tonight and the extended audience, you know, who are you holding? You know, or is there anybody uh, you're holding any grievance toward? You know, and here's the affirmation again. I am willing to let it go. I'm willing to let them go and be free. Because in fact, if you're willing to do that, you're going to become free. Um, I'll give you two more, then I'm going to break it. I welcome good things into my life. And I'll, and I'll add to that. Miracles are nat natural. This is a line we borrow from the Course in Miracles. Miracles are natural. When they're not experiencing, when you're not experiencing them, the Course in Miracles would say something's gone wrong. Nothing's really gone wrong. You know, the kingdom of God is at hand. When you're not experiencing the God, the good, the presence, the omnipresence, it's because you're, you're wearing a pair of glasses that are pre that's preventing you from seeing exactly what's here. It's all here. Ernest Holmes would suggest we create avenues in mind. And what he was saying by that statement is, when you get really clear about who you are in relation to source, you're one with God, and you will open up avenues in mind for you to experience the good, the God, which is certainly here, right here in this room, right in this group, and among us all. Uh, I'll go with this one, then I'll open up the group. Whatever, whatever, whatever you possibly think to know, you need to know, is revealed to you always at the perfect time. Perfect time. Every time. So that'll be it for the moment, since we can't have breaks and do it this way. I'll open up the floor now. This is the time of the evening where I'm always interested in hearing how well you're taking